Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Kayla Rivara in Baltimore, and welcome to this latest edition of the Black Finance and Fraud Report. Now joining us is Bill Black. Bill Black is an associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. He's a white collar criminologist and a former financial regulator. He is also author of The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One, and he is a regular contributor to The Real News. Thank you for joining us, Bill. So uh, as you know, Charles Keating, who was a key figure in the 1980s savings and loan crisis, has died at the age of 90. Bill, can you tell us exactly who Charles Keating was and, and what can we learn from him? Sure, but let me uh, make clear first that uh, I'm someone that was uh, personally uh, involved, so you, know, you can uh, consider any potential sources of bias. Uh, he sued me for $400 million in my individual capacity as a regulator. And he hired uh, private investigators at least twice that we uh, know of to look for uh, dirt uh, on me and tried very hard to get me fired uh, in allegiance with uh, then Speaker of the House James Wright and uh, finally uh, penned or typed uh, the infamous uh, message highest priority, get black, kill him dead. Uh, so with those potential forms of bias up front, uh, Charles Keating uh, was a champion swimmer. He was a lawyer who went into business first as a housing uh, developer and then as the owner of uh, the savings and loan known as Lincoln Savings which he acquired uh, not with any of his own money, but entirely with money funded by Michael Milken, uh, the junk bond king at Drexel Burnham Lambert. Keating became the most notorious leader of uh, an accounting control fraud during the savings and loan debacle, and Lincoln Savings became the most expensive failure of any financial institution in U.S. history until the current crisis. It cost $3.4 billion, which is an appreciable share of the total $150 billion cost of the savings and loan debacle. And uh, it was able to produce $3.4 billion in losses from a relatively small financial institution that only claimed about $6 billion in total assets. But Keating was most notorious for his enlistment of political aid uh, to provide cover uh, for all of these frauds. He's best known, of course, for recruiting the five senators who became known as the Keating Five uh, that intervened with us. And indeed, uh, it is exactly 27 years ago uh, as we speak, in fact, it's uh, pretty much exactly when the meeting began with four of those U.S. senators. Uh, Regal, Senator Regal was not present at the first meeting, but uh, Senator McCain, Senator uh, Glenn, uh, Senator Cranston, and Senator DeConcini were. Uh, and then a week later, uh, at April 9th, uh, 1987, was the second meeting with us with the field regulators from San Francisco. Both of these meetings were designed to intimidate the regulators into not bringing an enforcement action against the largest and most destructive violation of our rules in the agency's history. Uh, and uh, Alan Greenspan, of all people, was used by Charles Keating as a lobbyist to recruit these five senators who became known as the Keating Five. But Keating's political power went well beyond uh, the Keating Five. In addition, I've noted that uh, he enlisted the aid of the Speaker of the House, James Wright, and he was an enormously powerful and nasty speaker. Um, he, who, again, in uh, disclosure, uh, referred to me as the redheaded SOB, which my mother didn't much like, um, and said that I was uh, shooting poison arrows at him because I opposed his policies against the Contras, uh, you know, versus the Sandinistas in the Nicaraguan uh, Civil War, which was a, another flight of fancy. 
But Keating also got a majority of the members of the House of Representatives, and that included the leadership of both the Republicans and uh, the Democrats, uh, including a future Republican um, uh, Speaker of the House, who would then later uh, resign in disgrace. Um, and the majority of the House of Representatives co-sponsored a resolution calling on us not to go forward with re-regulating the industry, which we were doing under the Reagan administration. So, of course, that was anathema to the Reagan administration, but it was also anathema to both parties. And if we had given in to that uh, coercion, uh, the savings and loan debacle would have cost trillions of dollars. And then the most astonishing uh, aspect of Keating's political power is that he had so much juice uh, through his political contributions. He was a major contributor to each of the five senators and to uh, Reagan and to uh, the next first President Bush, they had he had so much juice with the administration that he was able to get the administration to prepare to name two members of the federal agency that regulated savings and loan. Well, the federal agency only had three members. So that would have given Keating control of the agency that was supposed to regulate savings and loans. And that would have caused just catastrophic losses uh, well into the trillions of dollars and would have been probably the worst uh, political scandal in U.S. history. Um, and that was blocked in part by random events, but in part because I blew the whistle on one of those moles uh, for Charles Keating. So. Uh, Keating was no genius, but he was someone of enormous audacity who understood that uh, what is a trivial amount of money, chump change from the perspective of somebody running a bank, is a huge political contribution from the standpoint of a member of the Senate or the House, and that the, the highest return on assets is always a political contribution. So Keating actually ran a very effective war against the regulators that stalled the, the uh, takeover of Lincoln's savings for years, and that's how it produced uh, such uh, massive losses. Bill, can you briefly compare the legal consequences of those involved in the savings and loan scandal, as you mentioned, versus the executives who are responsible for the subprime mortgage crisis more recently? Yeah, sir. At first, it isn't a subprime uh, crisis. It is largely a liar's loan and appraisal fraud crisis. So what people forget is that by 2006, half of all the loans called subprime were also uh, liar's loans. Link, in any case, Charles Keating was the trailblazer for not only the current frauds, but the frauds uh, that we saw in the Enron era. And in many cases, the fraud mechanisms are exactly the same uh, as he used. In any event, the causes of why you get these fraud epidemics, uh, which are the three Ds, deregulation, desupervision, and de facto decriminalization, and modern executive and professional compensation, these are the same in each of these crises. So if we had learned the right lessons from the savings and loan debacle, we would not suffer these crises. In ex direct answer to your question, you're asking about the de facto decriminalization that has occurred. In the savings and loan debacle, even the most elite, most powerful uh, savings and loan executives, like Charles Keating, like the former governor of Illinois who had become a savings and loan executive, these people were prosecuted by us to the full limits of the law and ended up not only convicted, but serving a substantial prison sentences. And to do that, our agency, the regulator, uh, made over 30,000 criminal referrals to produce over 1,000 convictions just in cases designated as major. And I've talked about the fact that we hyper-prioritize to go after the worst frauds. In the current crisis, exactly the opposite has been done. The banking regulatory agencies, who are the only ones who are going to do criminal referrals against CEOs, duh, banks don't make criminal referrals against their own CEOs for obvious reason. Well, the 
banking regulatory agencies ceased making criminal referrals uh, over a decade ago. And as far as we can tell, the Obama administration hasn't even reinstituted that. And the result of all that is complete impunity. The CEOs that led these three most destructive financial fraud epidemics in world history that caused this financial crisis and the hyperinflated the bubble and uh, caused the Great Recession. Not a single one of those elites has been uh, even prosecuted, much less successfully prosecuted. And uh, there is, it's clear at this point that there will be a complete strategic failure. They may eventually trot out some executive and, you know, before the 10-year statute of limitations run, uh, but uh, strategically, it is a complete failure because they have failed to learn all of the lessons, they being the political class, uh, that Keating should have taught us. Unfortunately, the CEOs of modern banks learned very well the lessons that Charles Keating taught them, and uh, as I said, used him and simply emulated many of his strategies quite successfully. Bill Black, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.